I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Lopez. Let's head over to you, brother. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's get some good energy going today. So one thing I like to do whenever I'm going into any kind of situation, day, whether it's meeting or just life, I like to remind myself, you know what? I'm positive. I'm ready. I fear no situation. So today, everyone, remember, we're positive. We're ready. And we fear no situation. Let's go. Huh, right? So, so here's what's cool about this is that he already has a mantra. He already has an incantation. He already has an affirmation that he builds himself upon. And the energy just said, go to Alex. And so Alex, way to be prepared, bro. Way to kill it. And way to bring us all out on the field on the right foot. So let's talk a little bit about gratitude. I don't believe in saying the words gratitude as a novelty. As you guys know, I believe in living in gratitude. So on Friday, my best friend since 1992. So check this out. I was um, 11 and a half, almost 12 years old then, and my best friend was 10 years old. We used to share a duplex. So I was upstairs and he was downstairs. Um, we've been friends since 1992. And here's a cool, funny story. So back in the days, we didn't have any money, like similar to their family didn't have money. My family didn't have money. Well, my stepdad, Back in the days, you can go through like the rafters and like steal people's uh, <laughs> cable if like you share the same structure. So my stepdad in like 1992 climbed through our attic to get through their attic to steal and splice the cable. Well, he didn't realize it. There was no support. So he fell through my best, my now best friend's mom's bedroom, hit his nuts on the, on the, uh, on the edge of the bed, whatever that is, the footboard or whatever, my best friend and his twin sister are eating dinner in the living room and they hear something. Their parents weren't there. They heard something. And all of a sudden, my stepdad comes out of the room like, uh, hey, guys, uh, uh, tell your mom there's a hole in the wall. I'm going to have to fix that. And so like, he came out hobbling. And like we have been friends ever since then. And we actually, you know, the reason I say is we're having Sunday dinner last night. And we're sharing stories. But you know, to like look back and we went through all kinds of stuff. We went through drug addiction and us both living on the streets. And then he found, you know, Jesus and that was his way. And, you know, I found a different way and left, left San Diego. But nonetheless, we're still great friends. We're still great homies. They came up here and literally we did nothing except for uh, we bought a Vespa. So we rode the Vespa around, went to the park with the kids and flew kites and then had dinners and like breakfast. It was amazing. We cooked and everything and then rode the bug around. And literally, we didn't go to the Bay, we didn't spend any money, and we just hung out here as a family, you guys. And for us just to do that, like filled with gratitude, like just filled to be able to spend the time with them, to be able to have an environment where I could have my family here and just reminisce and share stories and play Yahtzee. So today, Monday morning, you guys, I'm just super, super grateful to be able to have my friends come up here, my family to come up here, to share stories, to chop it up, to laugh and to be like, man, look how far we've came. Like we're just dads. All we want to do is just hang out with each other and, and like eat breakfast and cook good food for dinner. So I'm just filled with gratitude this morning. And so I wanted to share that with you guys to so just put you guys in a state that, you know, it, it, it's the simple things that matter to me. It's my family. It's my loved ones like, and good food, like literally that means the world to me. So I thought I'd share that with you. I want to go over to Eric, man, because you had some time this last week spending with your family. So I'm sure you're filled with tremendous levels of gratitude, my man. So I want to hear some of your stories. I saw some of your pictures. You took your parents to the spa out in Carmel. So Eric King, if I can have you kind of speak about your time this last week, brother, and look at the smile on his face. I could see it. <laughs> you know what? I was uh, actually hoping that you would call on me because, yeah, you're right. After spending uh, a few days with my parents, whom I love more, you know, more than anybody in the world, um, kind of recharged me, kind of reminded me of why I worked so hard. And, um, you know, to give you a little background on me, you know, I grew up as an only child. Um to, you know, poor immigrant parents, you know, growing up, I remember being embarrassed going to school because they dropped me off in my dad's carpet cleaning van, you know, and I used to be embarrassed about that while all my other homies were being dropped off in, you know, nice cars and stuff. So I've always had that kind of, um, you know, that's just how I was raised. And so, you know, it's really nice now, you know, working hard and being able to take my parents out on a nice trip and, you know, and, and they were so, so, so proud and, and, and just stoked that, you know, I was taking care of them, buying them nice dinners and shit like that. So it feels really good, man. And, 
you know, again, it just kind of reminds me of, of why I hustle so hard and it, you know, they're, they're my big why. Um, also yesterday I was on a uh, motorcycle ride with my friends and, uh, man, something really gnarly happened. And, uh, my friend got in a gnarly accident and, uh, oh, his bike caught on fire and he caught on fire. He's in the burn unit victim, um, in, uh, oh, San Francisco right now. So the reason I bring that up is, you know, it's really humbling and, and um, you know, it, life can change in, in literally a blink of an eye. So you know, I think it's important to just be grateful at all times and, 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 um, you know, not take advantage of this one life that we have. Um, it was really, really hard seeing that, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm today I'm feeling super grateful to, to be in good health and to be surrounded by, you know, people that I love and, um, feeling good. So, and well, we're sending positive energy and light to your friend and prayers up for your friend, my man. And, um, you know, if you need anything, if the family needs anything, reach out to us, man. It's a strength for them. So, you. Um, yeah, I appreciate you, you bringing that up because here's what I believe, you guys. I believe in, in in state changes and being able to identify where we are. Like, we all have problems, you guys. You know, right? we all have some problems in our life. But, like, look at what Eric just shared. I mean, that's a real problem, you guys. Sometimes it's like I have problems, but these are a lot of things I can fix, right? I need more money. I need to do this. Well, then just prospect more. Go and do the things that you know you need to do. So, Eric, I really appreciate you bringing that up. And, man, I used to be embarrassed. I got in a fight when I was in seventh grade with a kid named Dallas, and I broke his nose. Um, he always would co I'd come to school. And my parents were, were, you know, they were drug addicts, whatever. My, my stepdad used to buy cars, flip them. And, like, so we'd always come up in, like, this new car or, like, a, a different car. So we'd always joke when I got out of the car and be like, oh, another DMC, another DMC. It was a drug money car. That's what he'd call it to the point where I just got fed up. I just got fed up one day and I, I broke his nose. Like, he was just my – and my mom was okay with it because he kept on trying to make fun. He was a bully. He was a bully. He was a bully to everybody, and he finally got beat up. But anyways, um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. So – I have a couple of questions. And if you guys, and you know, listen, I appreciate everyone's camera on. If you have the ability to put your camera on, show up in a big way, be here, be conscious and, and be fully, fully involved. It's one hour, three times a week. And I just ask you that I'm going to step up. I'm going to ask that you step up and have your cameras on. So what we're going to do, you guys, I'm going to take you through some questions right now. Feel free to keep some notes. And at the end of me asking the questions, if you guys want to share some of your answers then I would definitely love to hear them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my screen on share so you can see some of these. There's no rhyme or reason here. Well, there is a reason, but there's no rhyme in the sequence. So let's go here. All right, guys. So I got a couple of questions for you, and I want you guys to really be clear. If you're not planning on Sunday night, you're missing a huge opportunity to go into your week with a clear, clear intention about what you're going to accomplish. So a couple things here, and I want you guys to feel free to write, keep some notes. If you guys are driving, cool, come back to this. But right now for this week, it is Monday morning. We are still at the early part of Q2. What are you committed to achieving just this week, right? Small, small bite-sized chunks, right? What challenges you might face? And I wanna use this platform in group coaching to share these things about challenges, as well as what support you may need in this area this week. For example, hey, it's Alex, you guys, I'm committed to, you know, going on three appointments this week. What challenges might I face? Uh, I'm just, it's hard for me with my schedule and so on and so forth. You know, the way I need some support and feel I need, need some help is, can someone share with me their calendar? How is the father they're able to do it? How are they time blocking? How are they having the discipline? All these things, right? So in this environment, you have Christina Pineda, you have, you know, Eric King, you have um, Amanda Lou who did $40 million in production last year. And then you have people that are everywhere in between getting their first deal, 510 deals and everything in between. So leverage this time to not only ask me questions, but to ask the environment questions, because that's how we're going to grow together. Another uh, thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to write down a priority list, meaning these are the things that I need to be doing in my business. Write those priorities out. And now I want you to take a second to reflect. And you might not be able to do that all on this call, but I want to get the mind rolling. When you look at your calendar for the next coming weeks, does your calendar reflect your priorities? 
Because a lot of times we spend a bunch of time doing shit that really doesn't matter when I look at it and I write it down and I can actually get it from here to here to on paper. I know the priorities of my life and they're my business, but sometimes they're not even on my calendar. So it's like, how can I hold myself accountable to the things that are most important to me? Lastly, and I got this from Tom Ferry. How much appointment time will you do this week? How many appointments will you book? How many appointments will you attend? And what is the intended results of you going on these? Well, it's my intended result is to get a new list. My intended result is to get, um, you know, a couple of buyer's consultations that's going to lead to me showing homes. Whatever the case is, an intended result. I'm going to have coffee with the client. What's the coffee with the client? Because they're shopping three other agents. And I want to make sure that I'm the one. So you guys have to look at your week and you have to look at everything and say, okay, what am I going to accomplish? What are my challenges I'm going to face? Who uh, can lend me some support? And this is a great environment. Create your priority list now that, uh, and make sure that these priorities are on your calendar and how much appointment time am I going to have and how many appointments am I going to book? When you guys look at this, I'm going to share something with you and, it, and it's, it's a little crazy. I know Eric is like, you're crazy with your calendar. But if I just look right now for tomorrow alone, and I look for, let's just go for the week. So if I just look at tomorrow alone, you guys, these are all the appointments for just tomorrow, right? And so the, the way I'm able to do this, I'm going to have 13 appointments tomorrow. It's because I'm super, super disciplined with my time. But also, I know exactly what my priorities are. My priori priorities are coaching having recruiting meetings with new agents and helping to lead the company. It is very, very simple, those three things. So when I look at everything that I'm doing throughout the week, those are my priorities and those are reflected. Everything is time blocked, my time, my effort, my energy. So I don't feel like I'm, oh my God, what am I gonna do? What am I going to do? But mind you guys, this was not always like this. There was a time in my life where I didn't have this level of discipline, but it came over time. So this is part of planning, pre-planning for the week, making sure that you're in alignment with everything that you're going to accomplish. I don't believe in haphazardness in this business. Everything is by design. Success is by design. You guys have a plan, you have a rhythm, you have a pace, you have a cadence to help you understand what am I gonna do this week? So you guys have some notes, you guys have some thoughts, you've started to jot down some things. I wanna ask you guys, I wanna turn the mic over to you, would anybody like to share where their thoughts are? Any notes that they've taken this far? Does anyone want to start to share? Because once one person shares, everyone starts to open up. And if I don't hear from anybody, I'm just going to call on a couple people. So let's go over to um, let's go to let's go to Jim. Jim, what's going on in your mind, bro? What's on your list? Let's hear from you, bro. Let's start this off. Uh, so yesterday. It was a little tough for me. I, uh, my, my grandma had, had a heart attack and, um, yeah. and uh, she was on her last, she had a speech with the family and whatnot. So uh, today I'm a little, you know, I'm here, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be engaged. So what are you committed to achieving this week? Uh, my goal is just to uh, call as many customers, uh, my follow up for, uh, for my open house and try to get an appointment this week. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Awesome, man. Um, and hey, man, prayers out to your family, to your grandma. Um, and you know, here's the thing, man, like he's got challenges, but yet he's still here first thing in the morning. So Jim, to you and to your family, love and light prayers up to you and your family, bro. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out. Otis, you had your hand up, bro. Let's hear from you. Uh, first prayers to Eric and prayers to you, Jim. Um, Jim, I'm your way. So if you find anything this weekend you need help on open house, whatever, I'll be glad and willing to help you, brother. Right on. Me, um, Elias, uh, I'm going to say uh, stepping out of my comfort zone and really uh, committing to things that I should be doing that really isn't costing me anything but a little bit of time, uh, printing out some different scripts, role playing with another agent. Um, Cortez is out of my way. We talked about it maybe this week, uh, getting with him. So I have another agent to keep me motivated because uh, I know the challenges that I'm going to face or negativity the drive and the motivation to do it. Um, if, if I'm doing it by myself and I'm, I could get discouraged like I have before when things don't go my way. So I'm just going to focus on things that I can control and just getting my stuff ready and going out there. Like this past weekend, uh, I knew I was supposed to follow the steps and I still have to get with you guys on my buyer's consultation. But uh, I recently went into my community app in Vallejo on Facebook and seen like 13, 14 people uh, that are paying $2,600 or more 
in rent and I was able to get a young lady to come meet me um, at Starbucks. Uh, but then she ended up having a problem and she was even more serious that we ended up getting on a Zoom and I walked through it and I was pretty shocked that I, I did pretty good. And that's um, from the help of all my brothers and sisters here, just feeding off you guys and, you know, taking a little bit of you guys' stuff and making it my own. And she was really motivated. Uh, she just needs to get to the steps. So I'm going to get with her within the next couple of days to get her with a lender to see if uh, she can qualify and we can move forward. And I love this. And Otis, I want to go back to something that you said. So you said that sometimes it's easy for you to lose focus, right? Like that's why you need some accountability. What I want you to do moving forward is like identify that, right? Like, oh shit, it's creeping in right now, right? I can either what? I can either succumb to that and have the same results that I've had before because you have far too much energy and passion and excitement about life to not be at 20 to 25 deals plus every single year, right? But if you identify that and be like, nah, like I see you, you're not coming in, not today, I'm gonna face you head on, right? But it's, so you have a choice right there, right? Something's gonna win. You're either gonna win or the challenge is gonna win. But like, I want you to identify that every single time. It's like a trigger. It's for me, like I don't drink, but there's triggers, right? Be able to notice that trigger and be like, mm -mm, not today, right? People say, nah, -uh, devil, you ain't getting it in or whatever the belief system is, right? Right, but like be able to identify that. Don't succumb to it and be like, I'm gonna do everything to overcome that. Hey, Cortez, let's get on a, a uh, dialogue script role play right now. Hey, Eric, Elias, you guys wanna get together? It's like, do something about it. It's like, hey, someone drinks a lot. I feel like I wanna drink. What do they do? They call their who? They call a sponsor, be like, hey man, I just need a little support right now. I feel like I want to bottle, grab, grab a bottle of whiskey. It's the same fucking thing, man. It's where we're at here. You need some support sometimes. It's bigger than what you can achieve. So I, I love this, man. I loved it. Stay there. And I love that you turn that conversation to a buyer's consultation. Cortez, you had your hand up, bro. Let's continue this flow. Okay, cool. Uh, this week, I'm going to be actually paying my real estate dues. I had some issues with real estate. We had some mix up where my license was actually not active, but uh, I got the letter on Saturday saying that it's all good. I got to pay the $95. So I'm going to be heading to Sacramento today to take care of that. Good. I actually have three clients that have pre-approvals and I'm going to be following up with them today and I'm seeing where, that, where that's at and when we start looking at houses also i have an appointment with a life insurance friend i have so we're going to try to network together so i can send clients to her she can send clients to me and um i just want to uh catch up like on my since my license was suspended sort of like i kind of wasn't catching up on everything so i'm gonna be paying my supra all my everything that i need to pay i'm paying that today sure. so that's what i'm on i'm just trying to get back active Good. I love it, bro. I love it. Andrea, you had your hand up. Let's hear from you. Hey, good morning, morning. Good morning. Um, so this week, one of my big ones is uh, seven days of the miracle morning. Um, last week, I, I did five, which was good. I was, this week, I want to kill all seven days. All right. So uh, for the people that for the people that don't know the read, kind of give us some context there so we understand what, what it is. Um, it's uh, starting your day about an hour or 30 minutes earlier than when you wake up. Um, so it's called Savers. It's uh, S is for scribing, or no, S is for silence, A is for affirmation, V is for uh, visualization, E is for exercise, R is for reading, and S is for scribing. So mm. taking time for yourself to start your day. I go, got up at seven this morning, had time to myself. Good way to start your week, I mean your week, your day, and um, just kind of give you that boost to get. Yes, I love it. Love it. And so you start, yeah, you just started doing this last week. I did it last week. I did Monday through Friday. Okay. Uh fell off Saturday, Sunday. But in in there's this app that if you don't do it, you just start all over. So it's actually today's my day one again. Um I, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. So what kind of walk app? us through. It's a miracle morning app. It's just uh download it. Okay, cool. Go I on. love it. So to, to kind of walk us through some of the emotions, like how does that how'd that make you feel? Monday, that's I'm still hey five days you're going to get back on you'll do seven yeah. days this week but like how did it make you feel kind of walk us through some of those emotions actually um um just I was fine with it uh, I was kind of bummed that I didn't do the seven days but it's like you know what get up off I mean if you fell off your horse get up uh, on it again it's a, it's Monday to you know start all over and yes. uh, kind of just juice to get it get through the Love seven it. days and get through the 30 days uh eventually I love it 
Um, anything that you need from us, from the team, support, any challenges that you might face this week, any dialogue that you want to have? No, I have all the support from you guys. Last week I spoke with you and um, got my calendar together and um, yeah, I'm ready to crush it this week. Love it. I absolutely love this. Good stuff. Um, let's continue on this conversation. We have some great feedback, some great insights here. Um, I'm going to come to Chris Edwards in just a moment, but um, Kevin Magno, I'm going to turn to you, bro, and then I'm going to go over to Capri because it's good to see you. Then I'm going to go to Zyra. Um, so Kevin Magna, I saw your video, bro like powerful video over the top, like coming in, like it's super, super powerful. And so I like, kind of want to hear from you, my man, you're a man of discipline, you're a man of routine, you're a man of structure. So kind of tell us where your head's at based on the conversation, based on the questions. I'm sure you already planned some of these things out for the week. Yeah, that was gonna, that was a big culmination of uh, an eight month escrow. Um, and just really was glad to be able to get my son out there and uh, shoot a cool little drone footage of, the amazing property. And uh, now it's time to partner with, uh, with Ben and uh, start farming that area a little bit and see if we can uh, put some of that in, uh, into action. So that's actually on the list for this week. Um, as well as uh, so, so, so for the people that don't know, like, tell us what your, what your plan is. Obviously we don't need to know all the inner details because it's your plan, but like, what is the plan? Like, what is the focus? When are you executing that? So we know like how your head thinks and how you're going to leverage that sale to gain others. Yeah. So uh, we're going to, we're going to try the EDDM route on this, uh, on this neighborhood. Um, I, I've got uh, some other farms uh, with Vivian that I'm, we're doing more direct targeting with title data. Um, so I'm actually doing a little bit of AB testing here to see what Maybe we can get a different traction based on different marketing strategies. Even though they're both mailers, they're they're a different clientele. Um, you know, in my other farm, I'm targeting uh, you know five to ten year homeowners with half a million dollars of equity. Uh, in the Concord area, we're going to go EDDM, so we're going to get renters. We're going to get um, you know people that just moved in, but it's more of a brand awareness. So a little bit different strategy. Um, and so we're going to play those. Uh, and I mean, I'm very grateful and thankful that I have the resources to be able to test, right? Because, um, you know, you, you got to be able to, uh, you got to be able to have the resources to play the game. And so uh, I'm, I'm thankful we got to that, that point in my career so far. And all of it is because I'm on Team Fast. <clears throat> I love it. And, and Kevin, I, I love this because one is, mo it's like, I'm sure with the EDDM approach, it, you're going to send out more than you would with your targeted focus on the other home, right? So one is like super, super like qu quantity. And then one is like a very, very targeted focus. And so, yeah. but on the large one, you're spending your cost per postcard is probably less because you're sending out more. So I see, I yeah. see what you're doing there. Good yeah, stuff. yeah. Yeah. So the EDDM, you know, you get, you get attractive rates, right? You get 70, 60 cents per drop, but the targeted is, is almost two to three times more, right? Yeah. But you're, you're targeting, you know, an audience that it's, you know, in, in uh, theory should be more attractive. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Well, Kevin, good stuff, my man. I love where your head's at. Love where your focus is at. Any challenges that you think you'll face this week or any support that you need from me, from the team or anything else? And EDM is not um, Electric Daisy Carnival. Um, uh, what does EDDM stand for again? Every door direct mail. Every door direct mail, literally every door. Uh, so yeah. Cal, uh, Kevin, back to you, any challenges, um, any support that you'll feel you'll need this week? Uh, just, I, I, I'm hearing word that uh, there's gonna be some design templates for flyers and things that are yeah. kind of standardized. I, I'd love to get our hands on that sooner than later. I, I am not a marketing design person and I spend way too much time with the nuance. And um, so I'm excited for that. And if you have any more updates on that, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, so um, obviously if you, have, if you have a need now, please reach out to Gabrielle. But um, as we go on and move forward as a company, what everyone's going to have is they're going to have their own um, open house flyer template, farming template, you know, your listing presentation, buyer's presentation. So it's already designed for you. What you'd have to do is just put in the copyright, change the address, because what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of stuff that is not the best quality work. Right. And, and we want to make sure when a consumer receives something, it looks fire and that the margins are off. There's not are on. There's not seven different you know, fonts. And so if you needed something immediately, reach out to Gabrielle and that's coming. We have some big announcements tomorrow at the meeting that we're going to talk about as well. So Kevin, good stuff. Let's go to Gurpreet. Gurpreet, good to see you. Good to have you here. Are you already in the office this morning? Good morning. I am. I am. Are you in, are you in Oakland? 
No, I'm at the, actually at my home office. Oh, you are. Okay, cool, cool. All right, yeah. so let's hear from you. So, so based on the questions, where's your thoughts? Where's your heads? If you want to share, let's hear from you. Yeah, so, you know, um, I am just actually taking it back to the basics um, of the fundamentals of being a real estate agent. Um, you know, we, we learn and we, actually there's probably a lot of us on this call that really know what we need to do, but it's a matter of executing and planning it out. So for me, you know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing and there's nobody to blame but me if I'm not executing, right? So it's like, okay, all right, girlfriend, chop, chop. How are you going to do this? What works? What doesn't work? So I am actually taking it back to the foundations, the basics. And um, what's the most important thing is setting appointments and making your calls and updating your CMA. That's all I'm going to be focusing on until I master that. And then I can move to the other part of the business, which is like marketing, prospecting, doing other things, you know, building other pillars that we absolutely have to have in our business to generate um, income. But it starts with the basics. So that's where I'm at. I love this. You know, because, you know, this this question, how much appointment time will I do this week? How many appointments will I book at 10? What are my expected results? Like, right, that's where our head should be at right now. Like, how can I book as many appointments as possible this week? And some of you have a great opportunity because let me just get a reaction down below. How many of you attended or hosted an open house this last weekend? All right, cool. So cool. So then there is a ton of follow-up that can happen. Literally, what well, could have, should have happened last night, but I get it. it's Monday morning, but like you have so many new opportunities, fresh opportunities, right? There's a new focus. And so um, I love that, Capri. And we've been talking a lot about this, you know, taking it back to like the simplest, simplest, fundamental sales skills. Because what happened through COVID is that a lot of us got a little soft in our sales skills. We leverage tech, which is obviously important to create a enhanced consumer experience. I get that, right? Well, if you're not a great salesperson, what I mean by that is know how to overcome objections, know how to have dialogue, know how to understand who's in the room, who the audience is, how to adjust your personality based on their behavior traits, all these different things. It's going to be really, really hard to succeed and just get away uh, with, with having great tech. You have to have an element of being a great salesperson and that comes down to the fundamentals. So I really appreciate you saying that, Gurpreet, because we've been actually having that conversation. Syra, let's go over to you. Well, where are your thoughts out? Let's hear some of your notes and where your mind's at and how it's working this morning. So I totally agree with um, Gurpreet on just taking full responsibility for where you're at and what you could be doing better. Um, there's something that's really stuck with me for this, especially this past week. Um, it's everything works, but not everything works, meaning everything works, but you have to zone in and like focus on the either top two priority things of prospecting, but don't try to do everything all at once. Because when you try to focus on too many things, none of it's going to work because there's not one thing or two things that just get full focus on it. Um, I have my first ever buyer's consultation today at 10 and I'm so freaking nervous, um, but I'm, I'm just excited to, um, to just overcome that fear. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because here's the thing, Zyra, you're already in contract, right? You and Joellen got in a contract. And so you've been able to take somebody into the buying process and now you're an escrow. I don't know the, the, the COE, but you already know this, right? You've been training and you've been hearing this for months. It's all going to come together in your life. I promise you. Yeah. So I, I think that's definitely one of the biggest things I did bring. Jo this is actually um, my, not only is it my first buyer's consultation, but also my first social media lead. Um, so oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, I did bring Joel and I think we work great together and just like bouncing off of each other. I still have a lot to learn. So I don't want to just I know I should probably go head on, but I was, I really feel like this sense of um, comfort and just not only working with Joellen, but learning so much from her experience. So, so yeah. I love it. And this is how great partnerships will, will arise. And then once you do this one and you guys are teaming up on it, it's kind of like, it's like a nudge under the table of like, all right, that's your cue. All right, cool. Back to you. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Joellen. She's going to cover contingencies and what protects your EMD. Boom. All right, cool. And then after that, now I'm going to go back over to me for city ordinances and closing costs. Cool. And then we're going to wrap it up. And so you'll start to find like 
this flow. I've done the presentation many, many times with a partner. And so you'll have some fun with it. You guys will learn you guys as you know, your communication styles together. So Zyra, I love this. Congrats. But let me ask you a question. You know what's working for you right now. Let's list two things that are really working for you right now. And let's flip the coin. What are two things that are you feel are not working for you thus far? Okay. So for me, it's definitely been my morning routine. Um, my morning routine, but not only that, but getting out of, um, like I said, full, taking full responsibility. So no excuses, no complaints of like, well, I wish I could have been doing this or it's just working with the flow. Like I'm, it's almost like I felt like this release of expectation and for some reason, everything's just coming. Um, I was going through like a really tough um, personal stuff and I wrote down in my journal, I want to get something into contract before um, March 30th, like just something into escrow. Literally it was March 29th and we got the call that our offer got accepted. So when you just put stuff in writing, everything works and um, yeah. Awesome. What's not working? Um, yeah. What's not working is it's that almost that little that little voice in your head that's like you can't do it, but then you're like, hey, shut up. Yes, you can. <laughs> like so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so yeah. That's all right. Well then, all right. So so I, I appreciate you saying that. Then you need to have a bit shut up reminder to yourself, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on your post it <laughs> on your dash, like. No, like, the, you know, my old manager back in the days used to call it stinking thinking, like stinking thinking, like be able to like identify it just like Otis and then pull the lever on the tracks to say, you know, my train's going this way. But it's not going down there. Nothing because, has control over you when no. you can identify that. Like when you know what what your reaction is going to be, nothing can have control over that. So yeah, I totally agree. Yes. And so, uh, and I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing and I cannot wait to hear um, your buyer's consultation. Here's the thing. Try to record the buyer's consultation. How do you record that? Hey, you guys, we're going to cover a lot of information in a very short amount of time. I'm going to share everything about the buying process with you. Would it be helpful for you guys to have a reference point in case you have questions you guys want to go back? Cool. Then I'm just going to hit record on this. I'm going to send that recording to you afterwards. That way you guys can speed up and go back and rewind to make sure that you really understand the flow. We didn't miss anything. Is that cool? Awesome. So now you've gotten the okay for your record. And guess what? You have the ability to go back and really be uh, you know, a critic for yourself and find polishing points. That's something Eric and I can use to help you get better. And so that's the way you broach it with the consumer, right? Because if they just see the recording, I'll be like, why is this fool recording me, right? <laughs> okay. so, so that's the way to broach it. It's all about, and at the end of the day, it is for them. It's helpful for them. So Super, super happy for you. Super happy for you. We're going to pause for a quick mom moment and we're going to come back to this conversation, but I wanted to share something with you guys. I thought it was really powerful. I think it's really important. So um, I told I told Mr. Smooth to start creating some videos. I'm like, dude, you got a voice. You got a big presence. Um, and Because I didn't see too many videos. So check this out. Like this one was a while back, but I didn't see too many recent videos of him speaking to the camera and telling the world what's going on. Like what's up with them? And this video that he created over the weekend had 700 let me just pause this really quick so it had 749 views but what's most important on this it's not just the views it's the 46 comments that he had on this video right and you guys he's not talking about the statistics in every single neighborhood I become a realtor where there's four main reasons listen so i was recently asked why did i want to become a realtor where there's four main reasons for that and this is in alphabetical order. My daughter, Christiana, whose birthday it happens to be today. She's turning nine. Happy birthday, baby. My grandmother, Elizabeth, my mother, Glamis, and my sister, Sasha. Those are the four people that I know, no matter what happens, good or bad, they're going to love me unconditionally. All I want to do is put them in a better situation in life. Let my All right. So right there. And we're gonna go, you guys can go back and watch that. But like being able to share what your clear vision is for the world and why you are doing what you do. We talk a lot about the why, but a lot of times people don't see that video because if I'm shopping Realtors and I have the ability to go and see Chris's video, I'm like, damn, I actually have my, my sister's name is Sasha. She really, it really is. I have a daughter. 
right? I love my mom. I love my grandma. Like all these things. I'm like, that's someone that I want to do business with, right? No matter what, like I see it, I see this human side. So, so Chris, let's have you take yourself off of mute for a second. What inspired that video? Why did you create it? What kind of feedback have you been? I'm obviously getting a lot of feedback, but are you engaging with people? Talk to us a little bit about the traction that this one video is getting. So I made the video uh, because we had our one-on-one -on -one and you said, Chris, you got to get out there, bro, and just put yourself out there. And um, I was obviously, that's, that's not my, like, I, I do videos, but I'll never highlight myself in the video. It's highlighting what I'm doing and, and my surroundings. So uh, it, was, it was different. I, I took about 10 tries just to get that little video. Um, I'm really from San Francisco, like my man. Oh, but I'm, I'm I'm really from San Francisco. So I took you guys to my favorite view of all time. And not too many people know about that. And it's like, yo, let me just highlight myself and let's get out there. And the, the feedback has been nice. Um, I honestly didn't think that many people would support me. Oh, sorry, 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 buddy. Keep going. I'm sorry. It's all good. I didn't think that many people would support me. Just just the little words alone was like, okay. I can do this and, and I'm, I'm going to have more support than I thought. So uh, for the likes and, and the comments compared to the views, not everybody going to going to support you like that. But to know that it, it's, it's going to be possible and it's going to happen is a good thing. And, and I love this. I love this powerful, powerful moment because and like, check this out. This is what else he did really, really well with so this video. So let me pause it for a second. When you look at everybody that had commented, gave him a, you know, a clap of the hands, whatever the case was, he went in there, he took the time like a true professional and he responded to everybody giving him love. And that's really, really important because it's not always about being interesting, it's being interested in other people and being like, hey man, thank you, I appreciate that. It's like someone walking by and saying, hey, how are you? And you Definitely. say nothing. <laughs> right. So, so you did a really good job and respond to that, but it just goes to show like one video, almost 800 views, 46 comments, bro. So you have an audience. People think that you are great. They follow you for a reason. Give them more of what they truly want, man. Be your true authentic self and start building and stacking and stacking. So I want to share that with you guys. So let's give him a round of applause for stepping a little bit outside of his comfort zone and doing big things. So Chris, Good stuff. I absolutely love that. We're going to continue this conversation. Um, Miss Maluya, am I saying that correct? Help me out. M A L U I A. Do I say, am I saying it right? Take yourself off of mute. It's Maluya. Maluya. I always mess it up. Jeez Louise. That's a, that's a hard one for me. So, all right. So, what is on your notes? Tell me where your thoughts are and, and, and share with the group. Well, I just recently went into escrow, so that's been my main focus because it's actually my first one. Woo! All right, so listen. All right, let's stay there for a quick second. So how did you get the lead? What, meaning what was your strategy and how did you get your offer accepted? Let's hear it. It was actually through Op City. Um, I got the call, I think, like two weeks ago on a, on a Tuesday. We went to go see a few houses in Vacaville on Thursday. She actually fell in love with the house that we, like the second house we looked at. And then she wanted to uh, put in an offer on Friday. So, yeah. and then um, it was crazy because it's, the, the house is a really nice house. And like with the houses in Vacaville, like they've been going off the market like hella quick. So I was hella surprised when I seen that that house is on the market for seven days. So then I actually called up the listing agent and just, you know, we got into conversation about like, how's the house? Like, why has it been on the market for so long? But he had no idea why it's been on the market for so long, but like we built like a relationship and we've just been like texting back and forth. I, I like call him every time I have a question about anything. And then um, I think there was like one other offer that was put in, but I think because we built a relationship, we, he was able like, I don't know. We just got into contract real quick, actually. Beautiful. And for the people that don't know, how long have you been with the team? Um, I joined the team in January, the end of January. Beautiful. And you've been grinding, you've been showing up to coaching, you have a mentor, you've been coming to the office. And so it's all coming forward. So I love this. Let me ask you this. What is your goal for this week? What are you committed to accomplishing? Well, um, this week I'm trying to get a open house. Um, actually, I actually have an appointment today with a client to see a property in Sacramento. So 
Nice. Uh, my, my main goal is to actually find her a property by the end of the yeah. week. We'll cool. see how that goes. And you have a lot of San, uh, Sacramento folks up there and, and you know, depending on where the home is that are experts in that area, lean to the people that are up in that market. You have tons of people. And then um, what do you think a main challenge or some um, hurdles that you might face this week, just this week? Um, I, I really don't know. Um, probably staying consistent with my morning routines. I fell off hella bad after March, but um, I'm hoping to get back into that. I cannot tell you how important that is. Like, it, you obviously know that, but like yeah. how it helps you build in other areas of your life. And so really, really happy for you. If you need anything, make sure to reach out. We're here for you. Let's give her some love. Um, congratulations. I'm looking Thank for you. supporting you and celebrating this win. Otis, is that a new hand or an old hand, bro? New hand. I just wanted to touch up uh, on Chris, uh, but she got on. I wanted to congratulate her too on our first. Um, Chris, uh, me met up two hours before I went to the J, uh, JVM or JM uh, lending um, yeah. uh, meeting. And we were just supposed to meet up and just go over stuff and, you know, do stuff at the office. And he told me straight up he wasn't going to go to the go to the to the to the event. He was in a shirt and basketball uh, shorts. And he was just like, man, I ain't, I ain't trying to go. Oh, like, well, well. but um, somehow me and Molly, we were in him. We're just shooting the shit for about two hours. Uh, and I, I got him to go over there and we went over there and, you know, I just told him, man, you're a sweet bro. You're going to, you're going to stand out wherever you go. You're fucking six, eight, you know, you command the room as soon as you walk in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, this is what we need to do. Cause one thing that I know the way I got so high up into my production and got to radio and got to fucking mingle with celebrities and start to interview them was I would fucking work the shit out of a room. I would go in there and introduce myself, give out cards. And it's crazy how I'm still trying to implement that raw person who does that into real estate but just being with him in that room and seeing him change within an hour and going up to people himself and just really working it himself I had to give it to him and I think that uh maybe we should try this everybody on the team somewhat is gravitating towards one a partner or something why don't we have each other push each other uh with one of these uh challenges for the week you know what i mean so we're really holding ourselves accountable for it because i know me chris and cortez we definitely all three gonna mingle and we're gonna we're gonna take care of some business this week yeah, yeah i was working that room man <laughs> that's right i bet he was and, and, and here's the thing you guys like your your people that come to group coaching or people you see in the office these are your accountability buddies these are your accountability partners right if you want that if you need that then reach out to them like hey vanessa uh, you have a little baby i see him on the lap like i have a child like hey can we get together and talk mom stuff and like business and how we're going to do this together and how we're going to form our schedule like that's a great conversation hey kaleem i seen that you just got your license you know i want to shoot the shit with you Hey, I did 40 million. I want to take my business to 60 million. Who wants to chop it up with me? Because we're at the same levels of production. You know, we want to raise our own levels together. So you guys, I, I absolutely believe in that. So let's continue this conversation. Let's hear from two more people. And then we're going to come full circle on this. Um, I see uh, Christina Pineda on the line today. Christina, uh, you always have great insight, great thoughts. You've been crushing the game for a long time. Do you have some time to chime in? I'm here. I know. Well, I'm going to ask you to turn your camera on if you can, no matter how bad your hair looks. <laughs> okay, like, here we go. <laughs> kind of, she's like, you son of a gun. It can't, it can't beat my bun. It won't <laughs> beat my bun. Let's see. Um, not a bun. Um, so, <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. I think a lot of people have a lot of great um, ideas and energy. And definitely I'm all about the networking piece of it. I think that, um, you know, it, it's just natural gravitation that I love. And, and you know, this group is a, is a great collaboration group as more and more that I'm looking at other brokerages of different people kind of presenting. And Kenny's done a great job of visiting other people's um, sessions and that kind of stuff and just really being transparent about what we have. What we have is just unheard of. So no matter where you go, what you look or people even working with other companies, listing agents, buyers agents. I mean, there's just a difference with our people. So just really embrace that, embrace the culture, embrace the knowledge that we have. I mean, I still learn every single time I walk into any office, whether it's somebody new. I mean, Brittany, I work with Brittany a lot and she comes up with things that I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know how to do that, but she did. So it doesn't matter if you're new, old, seasoned, virgin, if you will, but, you know, just, just be open-minded and coachable. 
I love it, Christina. I appreciate the the, the thoughts. And you know, it, it, Kenny's made a post yesterday, and like we have been attending a lot of events over the last couple of months, and like we're speaking at this big event in Arizona next week, and we go on right after Glenda Baker. I'm like, why well, you got to do that to us, right? I'm like, I love sharing the stage, and I'm love you know sharing our insights, but I'm like, we're going on after Glenda Baker. And so don't tell her this, but um, she wears these star shirts, these sweaters, these star sweaters. So I'm like, how can we follow her? And so I bought myself a star sweater and I'm gonna wear that right after her to like get the crowd, like just to laugh a little bit. But it's like, Kenny posted yesterday and he's like, we go to all these events, all the motivational speakers are kind of saying the same thing. And Kenny's not, not the type of guy, like we'll go to these events, stand up, clap your hands, cool, put your hand on your heart. He just looks at me like, Wow, I just want to record this. I don't want to do all this, right? <laughs> like, he's just like, I don't want to do all this, but okay, Elias, you do it, <laughs> right? Hey, we're going to speak. He's like, say some inspirational shit. And then and like, so we're finding like our voice and like a lot of the things are blending, which is cool. We get it. But he, he said yesterday, he's going to these clubs and these, these events afterwards. And like the music's the same, the middle's the same, and then the end's the same. So he's like, you know, how are you standing out? Right. When you look at people like Christina Panetta, when you think of people like Eric King, when you think of people like, you know, uh, Colette, and I can go on and on on the screen, but it's like you have to find a way to stand out. I know no matter what, I'm going to stand out. Why? Because of my fucking energy. Right. Like I just know that if I can showcase that, it's going to be different. That's my brand. So you guys are all these beautiful characters in your life. But sometimes what we feel is like, oh, I can't show that part of my character to everyone. I can't show that. Like, I'll do all the other things, but I'm like, just like, let that shit shine. Because I promise you when it's shining, when you look at Eric King, who was like my spirit animal, he is just who he is and he is comfortable, right? There's not too many agents that are going to show up with long hair on a Harley and get out with, with high water pants on and Vance are like, oh yeah, but I'm going to just spit some game and tell you exactly why you should or should not buy this home, right? Because he's comfortable who he is. So it's like, how do you stand out? Does your marketing look the same? Does your video sound the same? Are you doing, you know what Chris told me the other day? Chris is like, oh, I want to create a video about the escrow process. I'm like, why? Like, I get that, but like, I'm like, that sounds boring. Get the escrow person to do that. Do an interview with them live on social. Ask them some questions. But right, you heard it from the expert. Now, let me tell you something that's real to me. He went with something that was real to him. Look at the traction he's gotten. So do whatever it is you do, but find a way. Like I literally wrote that on my notes this morning. Like, how do you stand out? Like I have all my other notes, but it's like, how do you stand out? So appreciate you saying that, Christina. Appreciate you grabbing the mic. Kwanzo, you had your hand up, bro. Let's hear from you. Man, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Glad to be back in the environment, back on just being able to get back on the grind, man. Just real quick on the piece about gratitude. Um, you know, uh, I'm so grateful that I have my health back because when you don't have it, that's when you just like, wow, how something that is so like trivial, we don't think about it because we, we take it for granted and, um, you know, uh, and I argue that you know many of us don't don't give enough time to invest in it. Is when you don't have it, you realize that holy smoke, how important is it? Because you don't have it, nothing else really matters. Um, that's number one. Number two, going back to uh, you know whatever is the, the the topic at hand. I think the main thing for me, the big lesson or thing that I'm thinking about is really focus. Because while I was bedridden, I couldn't really do much. I was like you know like still stay on top of. Um, building my mind, you know, on a daily basis, but stuff I'm listening to a lot of this on a macroeconomics and, you know, it's a lot of doom and gloom and things of that nature, but it really comes back to like, where am I focusing my attention? Cause if I focus on that, it's like, shit, <laughs> you know, it's like recession's coming, blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, okay, well, what am I going to do right now? What am I going to do to make sure that I'm able to support my family and thrive in this, you know, changing environment. And uh, for me, it really comes down to doubling down on my, buyers and sellers really working on listings hard and also working on investors and so on and so forth but um yeah that that's all i have for today if you, if you, if you get caught in a, a trap where you're losing your focus then this is a good qu question for everyone to hear your answer like how do you get yourself back on track mm. do you have that answer i mean for me is honestly you know because like whenever i get in a rut 
I go back to listening to a whole bunch of stuff I usually listen to, the Tony Robbins, the sometimes Joe Rogan or, or whoever, you know, like Brendan Burchard and all these different people, because I'm always able to pull out either new nuggets or old nuggets that remind me something. And in this case, it was just, uh, you know, the, the thing that Tony Robbins harps over and over again about your triad, right? What are the things that you need to focus on or, or how do you get in a peak state, right? We, we've been talking about peak state a lot. Peak state is about your physiology. How do you actually like how you stand, how you breathe, how you, you know, how you feel your, your, your physical body, your focus. What, what, where are we focusing on? Right. Are we focusing on the fear of our being judged um, of inadequacy? Are we focused on actually giving and really connecting with our audience and just push, push, putting that energy forward? And then what's the language? Like, what are we saying to ourselves? Because if you're like, you know, like trying to trying to do something positive, but in your mind, you're like, no, nah, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's not, you know, that's counteractive to what you're trying to do. So like, so it was sometimes like, it, it's something that I used to practice regularly. And then I just totally forgot or stopped doing it. And then it's like going back to it. It's like, oh yeah, that's what I need to focus on. And it really helped me just kind of bring it back. Love that, Kwan. Here's, here's the thing, you guys, like, like, my mind is is like it's a fortress like i literally have conditioned my mind over years and years and years of reading of state adjustment of identifying how to identify my peak state like you guys it's a learned skill it's just like working out you're not going to get six pack you know in the in a month it's going to take repetition and skill it's going over and over and over again so you guys have to work on your mind just like you do your body like you guys are in control of everything. So let's pause there, you guys. We've had so much great dialogue this morning. I want to hear from two people. I want to hear from Sam. Sam, I just want to hear what your takeaways were uh, from this. And welcome back. I saw that you were on vacation with the kids, right? So hopefully, hopefully you guys had a wonderful time. Yeah, it's been a good spring break. I had to spend the time with them because I was like burning myself at work. They were happy. They were so grateful. They were like, thank you, mommy. <laughs> Oh, how sweet. So now they're back to school. I'm back to grinding. And the biggest takeaway is um, you just have to be positive and set your goal, goal and write it down like Zyra said. Good. So that's what I'm going to do. And then one thing I'm going to focus is calling. That's something I've been avoiding, but I have to do it. Yeah. And it's, and it's tough. That's one of the toughest things in this business is to learning how to do learn how to be a great closer over the phone. But I promise you, if you do it enough, it will get better and better. So Sam, I appreciate it. And glad you're able to take your kids on a vacation because I know how important that is. Um, let's go over to, um, is it Aquila Bowie? Am I saying that right? Hi. We haven't, we haven't officially met, but I want to hear what your key takeaways yes. are. Key takeaways. Yeah, um, well, yeah, you pronounced my name correctly, but okay. I'm just, I just jumped decided to jump on the call i've met you twice already in person Wait, once where? at the uh broker at the broker at uh, the expo the career expo and Concord oh, at the I, hotel Aquila. it was in it was yeah in, it was in san jose or, or Concord. the Concord, and then okay. i came to uh the women's you event the panel in oakland yeah so i'm just on here listening i'm i'm not in the business yet i'm still studying Okay. Well, hey. Well, no Trying matter what. Life, so I just joined the call just to listen to everyone. I love, I love, and you're here. So, what were some key takeaways? What were some things that you heard that were key takeaways from the session? Thanks for being here. Now I. Oh recommend. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just um listening to you guys about how you uh, motivate yourselves, you know, and having a mentor and what your daily routine should be, and you know, stepping out of that fear, that field of fear, because I'm big on that. I'm always scared and all oh, this is not going to work and just talking yourself out of the negative and talking yourself into the positive. So it's oh. really great to hear all this. Yeah. Well, well spoken. And hey, we're here to support your journey. And here's the thing, like you're not even a part of our team. You don't have right. your license, but I want you to know that we don't just talk about abundance. We act in abundance, that this environment is open to everybody. And we can't fake this, right? You're going right. to get a, like a precursor to what's truly, truly going to be your tribe if you do cho choose to join forces with us when you get your license. So thank you for being here. Appreciate your thoughts. Appreciate your insight. So I'm going to turn it over to Ernesto. Ernesto, I want you to take us off the field. Give us your takeaways from today. Give us um, uh, and take us off the field. 
and we're going to go out and have a wonderful, wonderful day. So Ernesto, takeaways and take us off the field today. Yeah, I love I love when people that I admire this business hop on a call, people like Christina, people like Kevin Magna. Uh, there's a good mix of people that are uh, more experienced and a lot of newer people. I, I, I come back to like the who, not the how a lot. Uh, it's hard to explain the value of this community, like the people you can reach out to, all the resources that are available. Uh, it's really hard to find people like Eric leaving brokerages where they're completely, you know, they're already crushing it, right? We just, uh, I, I think it's Amanda, right? Who's already doing $40 million. It's like you have to ask yourself, why would somebody leave where they are to come to this? So the who, not the how just becomes really, really important to me. I love that we come together. Uh, to your point, I, I followed Kenny's thing too. Uh, a lot of it sounds the same, but we've had this conversation, even if it is the same, like even if it's three, six months, a year of the same, if that's what fortifies your mindset to get to where it needs to be, then that's super valuable. So whatever, and then Zyra said something about whatever works or doesn't work. Uh, I, I I think of a quote, whatever you work will work. So people were like, oh, well, what's the magic bullet? Oh, what's the secret this month in real estate? Like there is none, like whatever you do and you actually commit to is going to work. So that's how I would take us off the field. Like whatever... Whatever you enjoy, you have to kind of listen to your intuition. I don't like this, or maybe like this is challenging, but I'm getting a lot of value and I feel the growth. Like if you feel that, then that that's like the good tension. So just keep doing that. Love it. I absolutely love it, Ernesto. So you guys, I um, appreciate you being here. Identify that conversation with yourself and say, bitch, please. All right. Thank you, Zyra, for saying that. I appreciate that. So you guys have a wonderful day. Tomorrow's team meeting, our 1030 scheduled meeting that we always have on Zoom. We're actually having it at headquarters tomorrow in um, Oakland. If you're not able to be there, we'll try to live cast this. You guys can still be there. But Q2 is going to be a very important quarter for us. And so we want to make sure that we're coming together to share with you guys, obviously, what we have, what we've accomplished together, but also where are we going um, the theme moving forward is obviously how do we help you guys produce at a high level, but also how are we helping everyone achieve the ability to build wealth in this business? There are so many opportunities for you guys. The conferences that Kenny and I are going to for EXP, it is mind blowing what has been achieved from these people and we're no different. So the mindset and the thoughts moving forward, it's like, all right, help them sell more real estate help them build assets and let them know all the big projects that we're working on. They're going to help you guys grow in this business. So looking forward to seeing everybody there tomorrow at headquarters. Uh, feel free to carpool. If you guys are coming from Sacramento, I know Dan said he's buying train tickets, whatever it is. Looking forward to seeing you guys. You guys park in the parking garage. that's directly across the street from the movie theater. We'll put a reminder out in Slack, but you guys, thank you for your thoughts, your insight, all of your, your shares this morning beyond grateful to be able to spend this time with you guys. So peace and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye, you guys.